Hey Saints, um, I wanted to talk to you about something. I have uh, seen videos and I've also had young people, I'm talking about their 16 and 17 years of age, saying that they thought about becoming Satanists and wondered why it was such a bad thing because according to the satanic ideology the goal is to become your own God where you don't have to answer to anyone and you have to achieve your highest potential even that beyond human capacity so you have to become more than what you were meant to be I don't encourage this ideology you see when when Satan tempted Eve in the garden he tried to recruit this ideology to her, right? and then basically by saying to her, if you eat of both trees, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil, because God created good and evil, right? So he was saying that she would be like God, like equal to God, because she knew good and evil. And because some weird ideology that um, Eve would have been able to create demons, which is not true. A lot of Satanists think that they can create demons, which is not true. And then Eve was deceived. Okay. So a lot of these young people are lured by that. They're lured by the dark side of Satanism. Satanism is darkness, period. period. So they're asking me basically, why is it such a bad thing to be a Satanist when you can do what you want? Well, see, that's the thing with the darkness. There are no boundaries you know, you're not really held accountable for anything, and that can be alluring to a young person that is used to a set of constraint rules, a set of rules. And then imagine taking that person and putting them in an environment where there are no rules and they can do what they want. That person is going to go crazy. They're going to find the darkness alluring, and they're going to want more of that. So the darkness can become very addicting. But you see, even in the dark side... There are a set of rules. If you don't adhere to those rules, there are consequences. For example, um, if you conjure a certain type of entity, okay, and let's say you make a pact with that entity, the consequence for making that pact could be a hidden clause that that demonic entity has that you don't know or the demon entity changing the terms every time. You can get in over your head. Like you might think you have control of a certain demon when you don't. If you betray a demon, it can mean your life, especially if you're not covered by the blood of a lamb. If you're not covered by the blood of a lamb, it can mean your life. So there are consequences. You think that the dark side has no rules. There are a set of rules. If you, if you join a satanic faction, there's many factions. They have their own set of rules. Like, one of them is, is similar to Iceland. Once you get in, you can't get out. If you leave and you defect, they can kill you. So you can't sit here and say that the dark side has no set of rules. There are rules. You might want to do what you want in terms of living for yourself and living in sin. But there's a limit for everything. In other words, these factions will not let you do what you want if it means putting their organization at risk or if it means risking exposing them. Satanists do not like to be exposed. In the occult, they are infiltrated in every part of our society. The occult means secret. They like to remain behind closed doors. They don't like to be in the spotlight. You may have your speculations of the Illuminati, but the Illuminati is a cover-up. They're being run by somebody else. The Illuminati is the occult, don't get me wrong. So the dark side can be alluring because, yes, you seem like you could do what you want, but it's not. It is not, and it is dangerous. Just because you're a dark member doesn't mean another one will not sell you out because being in the dark means is, is all about being competitive, competing for that godhood. Not everyone that's in the dark becomes godlike. None of them become godlike. So you always have in a satanic faction members competing to earn a higher, stronger anointing. They will get their names out there any at any cost. 
So I told you many times in the satanic realm, one of the strongest anointings that's counterfeit is becoming a werewolf or a vampire. Okay? Even a practicing witch, like I said, that some of them have even strived to become witch. You'll have members of the occult that are not witches, and so they'll choose that anointing. So just because you're attracted by all this, it's not what you think. You don't have much freedoms. Yeah, you can do what you want, but there's a certain limit. If you run the risk of exposing your faction, they will make it known to you. And a lot of times, the penalty is death, and they don't tell you that. They will use you as a sacrifice. Yes, satanic members have been known to sacrifice their own to their deities, especially if, if their deity broke or breached, a, breached an agreement with the faction or violated it many times, risking exposing them or defected. They will use you as a sacrifice. Don't think just because you're a member of a dark cult that they're in it for you. They're in it for themselves. They don't care about you. They're willing to sell out you, the next person, and the other to get what they want. Because they're competing with you, if you are in the dark, excuse me, and others, to become like gods. Doesn't happen to all uh, satanic members. You have to be called, you have to be selected. It's a counterfeit calling. Like in the kingdom of God... There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some are called to be prophets, teachers. Some are called to operate in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But in the darkness, you have no freedom. Not the freedom you have with Jesus Christ. Yes, you are to live righteous and free of sin. And if you sin, you have to confess the sins, repent of it, go through the corrections so they can be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. But the Lord gives you freedom. Freedom to trust in Him. Freedom to do His will. Freedom to be you, freedom to help others, freedom to fight for the innocent. You get everlasting life, eternal life. The rapture is going to happen someday, and I believe it's in this generation. No one knows the day, nor the hour, nor the year, but it's my opinion, it is in this generation. If you make it in the rapture, you will not see death. But if you choose the dark, you will see death. For the wages of sin is death. These people, these dark cultists, they think they're immortal, but they're not. They are just humans, and they will perish someday at an appointed time. And they will be reprimanded to hell forever. Okay? So, God, Jesus Christ, who can free you if you are entrapped in a dark world, gives you a choice to become water baptized, born again, and saved, and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, or to accept the alternative, Satan, as your false Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is the true Lord. He's so powerful, even Satan and all of the demonic community are afraid of him. They even believe in God. They know that God is real. They tremble before him. I can't make this choice for you, but this is in response to the emails that I've gotten. Why is it so, why, what's so bad about being a Satanist? I am telling you. In addition to the fact that you will be demonically possessed fully if you blaspheme the Most High God, you will experience some type of level of demonic possession and you will be used as a temple by demons. As long as you are practicing a sin, they have legal rights. It's part of spiritual law. The choice is yours. You can either stay in the trappings and in the prisoner Imprisonment of darkness. You could be a prisoner of the dark. Or you could be free in the name of Jesus Christ.